I can see it's for a big rob, said William, who was with the team on the other oar. Indeed, I might commit myself to saying it's enormous. You'd go as far as that, would you? Oh, aye, enormous is fully justified. It's nearly honest, Tiffany thought. This has got to work. It's my dream. Any moment. Any moment now. And how near us would you say it is then? asked Rob conversationally as the boat wallowed and jerked just ahead of the whale. That's a very good question, Rob, said William. And I'd say it's by saying it's very close indeed. Any moment now, thought Tiffany. I know Miss Tick said you shouldn't believe in your dreams, but she meant you shouldn't just hope. Uh, any moment now, I hope he's never missed. In fact, I'd go so far as to say exceedingly close, William began. Tiffany swallowed and hoped that the whale wouldn't. There was only about 30 yards of water between the teeth and the boat, and then it was filled with a wooden wall that blurred as it went past, making a zip, zip, zip noise. Tiffany looked up, her mouth open. White sails flashed across the storm clouds, pouring rain like waterfalls. She looked up at rigging and ropes and sailors lined up on the spars and cheered. And then the stern of the jolly sailor ship was disappearing into the rain and mist, but not before Tiffany saw the big bearded figure at the wheel, dressed in yellow oilskins. He turned and waved just once before the ship vanished into the murk. She managed to stand up again as the boat rocked in the swell and yelled at the towering whale. You've got to chase him. That's how it has to work. You chase him, he chases you. Granny Aking said so. You can't not do it and still be the whalefish. This is my dream, my rules. I've had more practice at it than you. Big fishy, yelled Wentworth. There was more surprising. That was more surprising than the whale. Tiffany stared at her little brother as the boat rocked again. Big fishy said Wentworth again. That's right, Tiffany said, delighted. Big fishy. But what makes it particularly interesting is that a whale isn't a fish. It is in fact a mammal, just like a cow. Did you just say that, said her second thoughts, as all the Pictsies stared at her and the boat spun in the surf. The first time he's ever said anything that wasn't about sweeties or wee-wee, and you just corrected him. Tiffany looked at the whale. It was having trouble. But it was the whale, the whale she'd dreamed about many times after Granny Aching had told her that story. And not even the Queen could control a story like that. It turned reluctantly in the water and dived in the wake of the jolly sailor's ship. Big fishy gone, said Wentworth. No, it's a mammal, Tiffany's mouth said before she could stop it. The Pictsies were still staring at her. I'll just... It's just that he ought to get it right, she mumbled, ashamed of herself. It's a mistake lots of people make. You're going to turn into somebody like Miss Tick, said her second thoughts. Do you really want that? Yes, said a voice, and Tiffany realised that it was hers again. The anger rose up joyfully. Yes, I'm me. I am careful and logical and I look up things I don't understand. When I hear people using the wrong words, I get edgy. I am good with cheese. I read books fast. I think, and I always have a piece of string. That's the kind of person I am. She stopped. Even Wentworth was staring at her now. He blinked. Big water cow gone, he suggested meekly. That's right, good boy, said Tiffany. When we get home, you can have one sweet. She saw the massed ranks of the Nakamak Feagle still looking at her with worried expressions. Is it okay with you if we get on? said Rob anybody, holding up a nervous hand. Before yon whale fi before yon whale cow comes back Tiffany looked past them. The lighthouse wasn't far. A little jetty stretched out from its tiny island. Yes, please. Uh thank you, she said, calming down a bit. The ship and the whale had vanished into the rain, and the sea was merely lapping at the shore. The drone was sitting on the rocks with its pale fat legs sticking out in front of it. It was staring out to sea and didn't appear to notice the approaching boat. It thinks it's home, Tiffany thought. I've given it a dream it likes. Pixies poured onto the jetty and tied up the boat. 
OK, we're here, said Rob Anybody. We'll just chop yon creature's head off and we'll be right out of here. Down, said Tiffany. Put it, leave it alone. Just leave it alone, all right? It's not interested. And it knows about sea, she added to herself. It's probably homesick for the sea. That's why it's such a real dream. I'd have never have got it right by myself. A crab crawled out of the surf by the drone's feet and settled down to dream crab dreams. It looks as though a drone can get lost in its own dream, she thought. I wonder if it'll ever wake up. She turned to the Nakmak Feagles. In my dream, I always wake up when I reach the lighthouse, she said. The pixies looked up at the red and white tower, and as one feagle drew their swords. We didn't trust the Quinn, said Rob. She'll let you think you're safe, and just when you've dropped your guard, she'll leap out. She'll be waiting behind the door, you can. You can bet on it. You'll let us go in first. It was an instruction, not a question. Tiffany nodded and watched the Nakmak feagles swarm over the rocks towards the tower. Alone on the jetty, except for Wentworth and the unconscious Roland, she lifted the toad out of her pocket. It opened its yellow eyes and stared at the sea. Either I'm dreaming or I'm on a beach, it said. Toads don't dream. In my dream they can, said Tiffany, and this is my dream. And it is an extremely dangerous one, said the toad ungratefully. No, it's lovely, said Tiffany. It's wonderful. Look at the way the light dances on the waves. Where are the notices warning people that they could drown, complained the toad. No life belts or shark nets. Oh dear, do I see a qualified lifeguard? I think not. Supposing someone was to... It's a beach, said Tiffany. Why are you talking like this? I, I don't know, said the toad. Can you put me down, please? I feel a headache coming on. Tiffany put it down and it shuffled into some seaweed. After a while, she heard it eating something. The sea was calm. It was peaceful. peaceful. It was exactly the moment anyone sensible should distrust. But nothing happened. It was followed by nothing else happening. Wentworth picked up a pebble from the shingle and put it in his mouth, on the basis that anything might be a sweetie. Then suddenly there were noises from the lighthouse. Tiffany heard muffled shouts and thuds, and once or twice the sound of breaking glass. At one point there was a noise like something heavy falling down a long spiral staircase and hitting every step on the way. The door opened. The Nakmak fields came out. They looked satisfied. No problemo, said Rob anybody. No one there, but there was a lot of noise. Oh aye, we had to make sure, said Daft Woolly. We wee men, shouted Wentworth. I'll wake up when I go through the door, said Tiffany, pulling Roland out of the boat. I always have, it must work, this is my dream. She hauled the boy upright and turned to the nearest Fiegel. Can you bring Wentworth? No, eh? And you won't get lost or, or drunk or anything? Rob anybody looked offended. We ne'er got lost, he said. We always ken where we are. It's just sometimes maybe we ain't sure where everything else is, but it's no our fault if everything else gets lost. The Nakbat Fiegel are never lost. What about drunk? said Tiffany, dragging Roland towards the lighthouse. We've ne'er been lost in our lives. Is that no the case, lads? said a rob of anybody. There was a murmur of resentful agreement. The words lost and Nak MacFeagle should ne turn up in the same sentence. And drunk, said Tiffany again, laying Roland down on the shingle. Getting lost is something that happens to other people, declared Rob Anybody. I want to make that point perfectly clear. Well, at least there shouldn't have been anything to drink in a lighthouse, said Tiffany. She laughed, unless she drank the lamp oil and no one would dare do that. The pictures suddenly fell silent. What would that be then, said Daft Woolly in a slow, careful voice. Would it be the stuff in a kind of big bot bottle kind of thingy? We a wee skull and crossbones on it, said Rob anybody. Yes, probably, and it's horrible stuff, said Tiffany. It'd make you terribly ill if you drank it. Really, said Rob anybody thoughtfully. That's very interesting. What sort of ill would that be kind of thing? I think you'd probably die, said Tiffany. We're already dead, said Rob anybody. Well, you'd be very, very sick then, said Tiffany. 
She gave him a strong look. It's inflammable too. It's a good job you didn't drink it, isn't it? Duffed Willie belched loudly. There was a strong smell of paraffin. Aye, he said. Tiffany went and fetched Wentworth behind her. She heard some muffled whispering as the pixies went into a huddle. I told you that we skull on it, Matt. We shouldn't touch it. Big Jan said that it should. It was strong stuff, and things have come to a pretty pass you can if people are going to leave stuff like that are in. Where innocent people could accidentally smash the door down and leave the bars aside and take the big chain off of the cupboard and pick the lock and drink it. What's inflammable mean? It means it catches fire. Okay, okay. Dinny panic. No belching and none of you is to tuck a leak anywhere near any naked flames. Okay? I like natural. Tiffany smiled to herself. Pixie seems very hard to kill. Perhaps believing you were already dead made you immune. She turned and looked towards the lighthouse door. She'd never actually seen it opened in her dream. She'd always thought that the lighthouse was full of lights on the basis that on the farm the cow shed was full of cows and the woodshed was full of wood. All right, all right, she said, looking down at Rob anybody. I'm going to carry Roland and I want you to bring Wentworth. Do you want to carry the wee lad? said Rob. Wee wee man, shouted Wentworth. You bring him, said Tiffany shortly. She meant, I'm not sure this is going to work and he might be safer with you than with me. I hope I'm going to wake up in my bedroom. Waking up in my bedroom would be nice. <laughs>